consider the consequences and implications of these ideas, this language, and this legislation before jumping on this bandwagon. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dirks. I consider it a uh, great privilege to speak to you today, Honourable Senators, in opposition to Bill C-16. I believe this bill to be well-intentioned, and yet it puts women and children at risk of sexual violence, and perhaps more importantly, removes a woman's right of consent when it comes to her bodily privacy. Our campaign has done hundreds of hours of research on male violence against women in public spaces. We have logged 255 incidents of the sort that many people say do not exist. These are largely a voyeurism in spaces like unisex change rooms at pools, gender neutral bathrooms, or in 29 cases, situations where males have expressed a female gender and perpetrated violence in women's safe spaces. Let me give you a few examples only from Canada. In 2012, Christopher or Jessica Hambrook assaulted two women in Toronto shelters. In at least one case, after three weeks of identifying as a woman, Darren Cottrell in 2013 dressed as a woman and committed voyeurism in a woman's washroom at Dufferin Mall in Toronto. In 2015, Zing Chen Liu dressed as a woman and committed video voyeurism in a woman's change room at Le Duc Recreation Centre in Edmonton. Also in 2015, the University of Toronto faced a debacle when they were forced to reverse their decision to make many of their washrooms gender neutral when at least two women were victims of voyeurism while they were showering. We recently did a geographical analysis of these incidents. We compared the level of incidents per population in those regions which had gender inclusive legislation, which those that did not. Regions with gender legislation were 1.8 times as likely to have these violent incidents against women than those without. All five of the regions with the highest incident rate per population were those with gender legislation, with Ontario being the second out of all states, provinces and territories. The best data we have available demonstrates that gender inclusive legislation is associated with increased harm to women. Target stores make for an interesting case study which corroborates this finding. It is well known that in April 2016, Target publicized its gender inclusive policy. In the 13 months since, Target has experienced eight incidents of sexual violence against women in the change rooms and washrooms of their stores. This was more than all other years combined. One of the most notable of these incidents occurred in July 2016 in Idaho. Shauna Smith, a trans woman, one of few represented in our database, videotaped an 18-year-old woman changing. At Smith's sentencing, the judge stated, I perhaps, along with others, thought that Target has now adopted a questionable policy and wondered, is someone going to come in and victimize someone because of that? You took advantage of that and victimized this young lady. But not only do women have the right to be protected in their safe spaces, they have a right of consent concerning their bodily privacy in places like change rooms. Stanley v. the RCMP 1987 states, we cannot conceive of a more basic subject of privacy than the naked body. The desire to shield, to shield one's unclothed figure from view of strangers, and particularly strangers of the opposite sex, is impelled by elementary self-respect and personal dignity. Stops v. Just Ladies Fitness in 2006 states, privacy interests are not determined by the lowest common denominator of modesty that society considers appropriate. What is determinative is whether a reasonable person would find that person's claimed privacy interest legi legitimate and sincere, even though not commonly held. Bill C-16 removes women's right of consent concerning their bodily privacy and overturns decades of jurisprudence on bodily privacy law. This is likely why a majority of Canadians do not support full choice for trans bathroom access. An Angus Reid poll in 2016 found that while 84% of Canadians approve of transgender rights generally, as do I, only 41% supported full transgender bathroom rights. It is highly likely that support for change room access would be considerably less. Honourable Senators, we need more protections for women, not less. And above all, women must retain the right of consent concerning their bodily privacy.